Hello and welcome to my very eclectic YouTube channel. The reason I say it's eclectic is because I've noticed that a lot of YouTube channels have videos based around specific themes. Well, I don't have any theme apart from the fact that I enjoy making videos and I make videos about what I enjoy. That's why my channel's eclectic. That's why there's videos on all different subjects. Back in 1990, I broke a world record for the world's fastest talker. That was 32 years ago. A lot has happened since then. And in 2013, I was diagnosed with cancer. Since then, I've fought and battled cancer three times. and I'm currently battling it now for the fourth time. This has changed my life a lot, including in March 2020, when the COVID pandemic arrived in the UK. It meant that because my blood cancer had left me severely immunocompromised, it would have been dangerous for me to have carried on working. So I took early medical retirement. I got bored with that after about eight weeks because there's not a lot I can do. Um, my illness has left me needing a wheelchair for the rest of my life and I am classed as disabled. So I, I really can't do things like DIY or gardening or anything that requires any sort of real physical effort. So I looked around for something that would keep me amused and stop my brain from turning to mush. And I reverted to one of my earlier hobbies. Now, one of my earlier hobbies was photography, which I really enjoyed doing. And gradually, I emigrated from to photography to videography. And that's where my channel is. I actually make videos about things that interest me, and it could be any manner of subjects. I also have some very specialised cameras, which are quite rare. Let me go through a few of my cameras that I've got. I'll go through the cameras that most of you recognise. This is my DJI Osmo. This is my 4K gimbal camera. Um, that's the highest resolution camera I have, and it's a gimbal camera, which means it does keep steady when it's handy. I use this a lot, and I actually like that. It's a lovely camera. That's the DJI Osmo Pocket. My primary, primary action camera and my go-to camera is the Drift Ghost. This is the Drift Ghost XL. This is an action camera, and I think this camera is actually better than a GoPro. The reason I think it's better than a GoPro is because... The battery lasts nine hours, and with a 120 gigabyte memory card in here, you really can record for nine hours, and I have recorded for nine hours non-stop. Yes, the GoPro might have higher picture quality. This has only got 1080p high definition, but you know what? It's actually quite good picture quality. You've only got to look through my YouTube channel and the wheelchair cam videos that I've made with this camera to see how good the picture quality is. That's my primary camera. That's the one that I use all the time. Now we come to the first of my specialised cameras. Back in about 2010, back in about 2010, 3D was very big, especially with 3D televisions, and there was a big movement in 3D. And I actually enjoyed 3D. Now, I used to shoot photography in 3D using what's called the char-char method, which is where you either have two identical cameras set up um, with an equidistant point, and you take a single, you take a photograph with them, and then combine the two pictures to form a 3D picture. Or you have one camera, and you take two shots by moving the camera slightly between each shot. Those are those are the methods you, the early methods for taking 3D photography. And then Fuji came out with a camera, the W1, the world's first realistic production 3D camera. And I bought one. There we are. Look, a Fuji W1, lovely little camera. As you can hear, it's all in perfect working order, and I still use it to today. Um, you can see it's, it's quite happy. It's a lovely little camera. The only problem is it, it, it's actually quite good at taking still images, 10 megapixel still images for 3D. It's very good at that. The only problem is the video resolution is only 640, which lets it down a bit. But when I got it in 2010, that was, that was very much state-of-the-art. It's also limited to about 15 minutes recording time. So, again, it's very limited. So what did Fuji do? They bought out a replacement for it. They bought out the W3. Here's a Fuji W3. Here's my Fuji W3. Again, as you can see, all in perfect working order. And I've had this for a long time. I think I bought this in about 2012. Um, and it's uh, it's much better resolution, it's 720p, which in 2012-2013 is very good revolution for a camera. 
but I enjoy it and it's it's great for 3D and I still use it today. So that's one that's two of my specialized cameras which I will never let go. And both of these cameras have increased in value over the years because they're so rare, because there's very few true 3D cameras. Right, what else have I got? Well, back in 2016, I got very interested in virtual reality 360 degrees. Sam, uh, Samsung, it's an LG 360 virtual reality camera. Again, one of the earlier first production models. Only 2K resolution, though, which 2K spread across 360 degrees means it's about the equivalent of 480. And I've got to be honest and say that for the video quality, I was never happy with this camera. A bit like the 3D W1. Because it was the first in the generation of the cameras, I was never happy with the video quality. It was always low quality. The still image quality of these cameras is actually quite good. Back in 2020, though, LG did the dirty on everybody. They stopped supporting the camera. Not only did they stop supporting the camera, but they actually crippled the software that you need to use it and then removed the software from the App Store. So even if you got hold of an older version of the software for this camera, you still can't use it because the app won't work on your phone. And that's the only way at that time you could get the images processed off of the camera to upload to YouTube. However, if you look at other ones of my videos, you'll see that I've done a tutorial on After Effects showing how you can still process the images and the video from this camera. So it's not a brick. It's not a waste of money. There's no need to throw it out. It still works if you follow my tutorial. That's that. And so we come up to the modern age now, my very last and latest camera, an Insta1 360 X2, a 5K VR camera. I love this camera. The picture quality of it is stunning. It's absolutely stunning. And I'm not reliant on the app to use it. So if Insta1 stops supporting this camera at some point in the future, I'll still be able to use it because Premiere processes Insta1 3D movies out of the box. So you just take the memory card out of the camera, pop it in your card reader, and you can process it in Premiere. So those are my cameras. And those are what I use. My videos, they, they, they stretch all over the place. There's loads on this channel. I've got, I've got videos that were made around the time that I broke the world record and since, and videos that were made not by me, but of me um, around the world record and since about the world record. I've made some videos um, in the last couple of months about my world record and the skill I've got. Um, I've got to be honest and say it was 32 years ago now, 32 years ago, and um, with my illness and everything else, I'm not able to go at the speeds that I used to be able to go at, but I can still get up to a fairly high speed. So every now and again, I do make a fast talking video, but it's not the, it's not the most important thing in my life. I've got other interests. Um, there's videos of journeys that I've taken in, in my wheelchair, and I'm just starting to upload my collection of 3D videos. I've been... Um, I've been making some 3D videos and processing some 3D videos, so I shall start uploading those. And I will start uploading some 3D images that I'll be taking later and combining those into a video. So if you're into 3D, um, this will be a place where you'll be able to see some 3D. I'm also busy editing and filming um, VR 360 video, primarily centered around my hometown or village. That's under a debate. We're not sure whether we live in a town or a village. It feels like a village, but it's big enough to be a town. But we haven't got a town council or a town hall. So it's a bit of a debate, that one. And I'm going to make a video on that. I'm going to go out in the street and I'm actually going to ask people if we live in a town or a village. So that, that should be fun. <laughs> this, this lunatic with a camera coming up to them in the street and asking them strange questions. That's that's going to be interesting. But that's, that's, that's a plan that I've got. And as I say, it's around the journeys and the places I go and the things that interest me. So there is no theme at all to my channel. I just thought I'd, I'd do this channel intro just to let you know that it's about everything and nothing. It's about what interests me uh, and the videos I want to make. I'm always open to suggestions. Leave me suggestions in the comments. If you want to see a video on something, please leave me a suggestion in the comments. You've seen the cameras. You've seen the facilities that I've got. Uh, there's another camera that I haven't shown you because that's up on the wall there behind me and I can't be bothered to get it down. And that's my Canon 650D, um, which is a DSLR. Um, I've actually got two more cameras I haven't shown you, actually. I've got my Canon um, 
650 DSLR, which again, I can use to make movies. And there's the camera that I'm actually making this video with, which is a Sony ZV-1, which is my primary streaming and uh, recording camera. I haven't actually used it out there to vlog yet, but I'm going to when I do things like asking people whether we live in a village or a, or a town. So I've got to I've got to work out exactly how I'm going to do that because I'm I have to do it on my own. I do need an assistant, but I don't. It's 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 a bit difficult. It, it is a bit difficult because of my uh, my issues with the wheelchair. So getting out to do things like that is a bit. Uh, it's a bit difficult, but I think I've found a way of doing it, and I think I, I've come up with a good way of doing it. I'm just waiting for something to arrive that allows me to do that, so I should do that. So that's what this channel's about. It's about everything and everything that interests me. They might interest you, they might not. We don't know. But you've seen my equipment, you've seen what I'm capable of filming, so if you've got any ideas, if there's anything you want to see, let me know, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be, let me know in the comments, and I'll be quite happy to do it for you. I will be going into the centre of town later this year. I need the weather to be a bit warmer at the moment. It's still a bit cold. It's April. It's still a bit cold. I'll be going into the centre of town, and I'll be taking my 3D and my VR cameras with me, and I'll be doing a lot of filming around the tourist sites that everybody knows. Um, I live in London, but I live right out on the edge, so I haven't got really any of the... Uh, tourist sites that you are all famous with. I mean, Big Ben is 11 miles in that direction. Um, yes, and I'm still in London, 11 miles away. So I actually have to go in, I actually, I actually have to go into the centre of town if I want to do that, but I will do when the weather's warmer and there are wheelchair accessible routes, which is the other problem um, with uh, going into town. And yeah, I'm going to make videos about that as well. I'm going to make videos about how hard it is as a wheelchair user to get things. I mean, in my own village, for instance, there's only one place where I can get a cup of coffee. All right, easily. Only one place where I can get a cup of coffee. And yet we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places that do take away coffee. So we've probably got more. But there's seven places, including two major chains. And it's only one of the major chains that is wheelchair accessible. All the other coffee shops have got steps, which mean that I can't get in there with my wheelchair. I'm lucky enough that a couple of them have got windows. So all I do is I park up outside and tap on the window and get a member of staff to come out and serve me. And they're really good that they do that. I've got the same problem with pubs in my village, town, whatever you want to call it. We have one two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight pubs in the village. One and one only is wheelchair accessible. None of the others are. So I'm going to make movies about that. Yeah, I know it's, it's, uh, we're supposed to be this forward thinking country. And then I'm going to make, I'm going to make videos about just the everyday hassle of uh, being a wheelchair user and how much we have to struggle. Like if I have to, going up into the centre of town, it's a major planning, it's a major logistic operation to actually work out the routes that are wheelchair accessible. For instance, my own local railway station, I can't use. Well, I can. I can use it to go to the coast, but I can't use it to go to London. The reason I can use it to go to the coast is because there's no way for me in a wheelchair to cross the platforms. The station entrance is on platform one, but the London band trains or centre of town, I'm in London, the centre of town based trains are on platform three. And I've got no way of getting to platform three because it's got an underground tunnel. There's no level access. There's no lifts. There's no way. So I can't use my local ra railway station. So I have to go to a railway station that's three miles away, which isn't my local railway station, just to get on a train. And of course, it's normally on the wrong lines for the part of London that I need which brings a whole other set of problems. I mean, the other the other week, I had to make a journey to hospital. Only, only, only a little journey, only about eight miles. I had, to train, I had to change trains once. I checked everything on that journey that I could change trains. And when I turned up at the station, I saw a notice saying the lifts at my interchange weren't working. Now, if I hadn't have seen that notice, and I only saw it accidentally, I wasn't really looking for it, but if I hadn't have seen it, I would never have known. I'd have got to that station and I'd have been stuck. Um, so I, videos like that I'm going to be making. So there's, 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 there's things around that. I've made some videos about my my journey on my cancer battle, but 
not that many because generally when I'm in hospital, I'm really feeling like shit. So I really don't want to make videos. I just want to get better. Um, and things like that. So that's that's what this channel is about. So that's what I'm making videos about, things that interest me and things that enjoy me. So this is my hobby, not a commercial enterprise. Um, and I'm not here for clicks or likes. I'm just here to do things for me. Um, I stream for the other, the other crap. So there you go. Like I said, anything you want to know, just ask me in the comments. Any videos you'd like to see me make in the future, Ask me in the comments. I won't say anything's I won't say anything's out of the question. I'll certainly give it a look. So until then, I hope you enjoy what I have put up on the channel.